The roadmap. I won't talk much about finances. Number four or number five now. Am I right? Number five is your finances. I wish I had time to drum it. I hope I will take one of, I promise you, it's a promise I'm giving you. Between now and when Koinonia is done, we'll talk about this money thing one more time. Maybe one of this week will come and just touch it again. Are we together? Because this finance thing is not something you hear once and understand. It's a very stubborn subject. You need to hear and hear again. And file this area, file that area, file that area. Finances, the, the teaching of finances comes with a lot of pride. Because most times people hear it and say, you mean it's this simple until they try it. Then they find out that they were trying to hold water with their hands. Everything just went out. There is a skill to it to make it work. Are we together? But generally, I will tell you this. You prosper to the degree to which you are valuable. You prosper to the degree to which you are favored. You can rest on that. You prosper to the degree to which you are valuable. And you prosper to the degree to which you are favored. The two principal keys that control wealth and abundance is value and favor through relationships. Take this as a rule of thumb. Value, turning your gifts your ability to products and services, packaging it with excellence and serving it to a targeted consumer base. You call that business, we call that value. Are you seeing that now? The degree to which you are valuable, serving solutions that are needed and useful. The reason why certain professions look more profitable than others is because they solve greater weightier problems than others. Are we together? If a doctor and a carpenter an architect is here, most likely the doctor will have more clients because humans are prone to being sick faster. They need health solutions better than even a housing solution. Are we together now? So when it has to do with prospering, there is a spiritual side to it. And listen to all of my messages that I've preached around finances, but I must tell you this. If you are not valuable and you do not refine your value and serve it with excellence. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. You will be poor or you will not be sustainably wealthy. There's a lot of superstition around wealth, especially as proposed by the church. And it's the reason why a lot of non-Christians are laughing and mocking and spiting the church. Because it looks like our entire theology about wealth is centered on giving and giving alone. While giving plays a very major spiritual and even psychological role to wealth, it is not limited to giving alone. Principally, value. There are spiritual laws that connect you, but I've taught you here value. The degree to which you are able to serve products and services that are needed and useful. Are we together? This mic was bought. This pulpit was bought or fabricated. This Bible was bought. This phone was bought. Are we together? The dress that I'm wearing, somebody put this together. Whoever was part of this value chain has had a portion of our finances. It doesn't matter whether the person was a Christian or not. Are we together now? That's how it works. Immediately after service, you are going to a restaurant or you are going to cook at home. The one you bought food from, you paid. The one you are going to, whose restaurant you are going to, are we together now? That person will continue receiving your money provided they are providing value. And then the second angle to it is favor through relationships. Question, when a millionaire gives birth to a son, what business solution did the boy solve to prosper? It's called inheritance. It's not called profit. It's called inheritance. Are we together now? Eventually, his inheritance can be transferred to profit. But at the time, it is called inheritance. So relationships are very powerful. Anybody you sell value to can reward you. But the person that likes you too can bless you. It's not called reward, but it's still money reaching you. And that's the most important thing. Now, when God really wants to power your life, he grants you access to do both. That you are both valuable and he connects you to strategic, profitable, pro-destiny relationships. 
It doesn't keep you lazy, but it becomes an acceleration for you. There are many people who relationships can give them capital and wisdom can help them do business with the money and they begin to scale. If you ask them, how were you blessed? They will tell you both relationships and value. Don't depend on relationships alone. It is the way of a lazy man. Even if relationships give you resources, it is wisdom and learning how to transact that grows your resources. But if the only thing you know is how to transact value, your, your growth rate will be very slow. Are we together now? Because transaction from an economic standpoint is tampered by many nuances, many biases. Relationships are a great leverage in life. Don't ignore them. I am a product of the financial blessings that have come from relationships largely. Relationships are powerful. Are we together now? You can build a house. You can own an estate. You can have a, a property, whatever it is. But by the time you transact, there are people who have written books. It has blessed them. There are people who have sold their materials, their intellectual property. It has blessed them. Some of you here make clothes. My assignment is to release grace on what you are doing. If there is nothing you are doing, releasing financial grace on it is profitless. Are we together? Lazy people shout amen with empty hands. Visionary people carry their value up and receive blessings on it. When people are lazy, they just shout amen. For what? What are you going to do now? Say nothing. All I know is that somebody will not sleep. We need to be careful. Are we together now? There are others who truly believe that they won't do anything in this life just because they love Jesus. Somebody must give them his house, his car, his clothes, pay their children's school fees while they just sit down and say God is faithful. It's the way of fools. I'm sorry to say it, but it's the way of fools. Even as a man of God, I don't expect that kind of result. That you are immune by priesthood. But I still believe that my hands are blessed. My mind is blessed. That favor will come, but I will not abuse the grace of God. Is someone learning now? In the name of Jesus, the spirit of laziness around your life, I curse it right now. Amen. Hear me? If you are troubleshooting your financial problems, the first area to go to is whether or not, whether or not you are valuable. Are you valuable then to who? If you are only valuable to yourself, you are flattering yourself because you cannot pay yourself. You will have to serve that value to another outside of yourself. And if the person does not need the value you carry, then unfortunately there will not be a reward. Some of you are valuable enough to be commended, not to be rewarded. Are we together? We can clap for you for the value you carry, but it's not exceptional enough, it's not refined enough, it's not packaged enough. Value must be translated to productivity. Productivity is when value is translated to goods and services that are now refined, served with excellence to a targeted consumer base. Then you are rewarded, not just commended. And then favor through relationships. I have taught you sincerely so that the easiest way to prosper is through relationships. Who hates you does not matter. I will say this to you endlessly. But who likes you matters. May someone like you before December. Yeah. Enough to contribute to your financial laughter. Yeah. Are we together now? I expect blessings from favor every day, including finances. I'm saying it without shame. I'm saying it without any sense of apology. Are we together? But then, after you check the issue of value, check the issue of relationships. Now, let me tell you this. I'm not teaching you to be parasitic in your relationship or to say, you, you are poor. You can't be my friend. Apostle, I've thought that prosperity comes from relationship. I found out that I've, I have too many poor people around me. That's, mm, don't do that. Because the person you are laughing at today, God can exalt the person. But I will tell you one truth. I will tell you one truth. I will tell you one truth. When you are transformed, your relationship will rise to match your transformation. If everybody around you is poor, I'm telling you sincerely, I'm not insulting them, but it's a report card to how your thinking is. You can steal the contact of a rich man from somebody's phone. Call the person and see whether he will pick your number. 
The fact that he's not picking your number means he does not recognize you. You have not gotten to that realm. So rather than embarrassing yourself, contend by light to a level where those who you call great today will also call you great. Is someone learning now? Yes. I didn't even know when the contact in my phone changed, quite honestly. It was not something that was intentionally done. And I can't remember deleting the old ones, but I can't find them. That somebody you desire will be the one to collect your phone and say, let me type my number to be sure you are there. You see, everybody blesses according to his riches in glory. If somebody is poor, he cannot bless you. You get what I'm saying? He may pray for you. He may intercede for you. He may wait upon the Lord for you. But as far as financial blessing is concerned, you will not get anything. Let me tell you sincerely, don't waste your time. It is wealthy people that can help give you the leverage of wealth. It is the truth. It is the truth. Pray for everybody to be around your life. But in this season, pray for quality people established by the mercy of God that they will look upon you with kindness and extend benevolence to you whilst God helps you to solve their problem too. This means it's finished. Yes,